This video is brought to you by Longoni Cues. Hi pool players, it's the Terminator. Welcome back to another episode of Terminator Tips. As you can see, I'm on the road again. I'm at the Euro Tour in Slovenia. And in this episode, I have a great lesson for you where we're gonna analyze patterns and structures for one of my students. He's gonna be playing the ghost. I'm gonna give him a review. This is something you can benefit from for your own game also. I do matches and playing the ghost reviews. So if you wanna jump on that, please contact me via personal messages on social media. So here we go, let's jump onto his table, watch him play the ghost and hear me analyze the patterns. Okay, here we go with the player review for Rick Miller. Rick is a student of mine. He's a very adept player. He played in the US Open from last year and he's gonna play a race to five in nine ball, the one is on the spot. He's using a magic rack. He's playing the ghost. That means if he breaks the balls, he gets cue ball in hand after the break, and he's going to try and run the rack. If he runs out with ball in hand, he gets a point. If he doesn't, the ghost, Casper also known for many, gets a point. So whoever gets the five first. What we can see right here is he's got the one, two, and three right here in a little triangle. And the five is kind of by the corner here. So he's having a look. He has to travel down table, Rick, to get himself an angle on this five. Ideally, you want to just play in the side here for the three, but the seven's blocking that. So he has to make an alternative route and he's looking there with a stop shot in this corner where he would get on the two. For a lot of amateur players, this is really interesting. If you pocket the one in this corner, you play stop shot. Now the cue ball's here. As you can see, then you're totally out of position for the two. So if you play it in this corner, it looks the further, the corner's further away, but actually with a stop shot, now he's in great, great position. So again, he's looking where he could get with another stop shot. If he just stops the ball, he's got a kind of a funny angle to roll forward and the cue ball would get to the rail. So he has to draw it back slightly to stay away from this long rail, follow through for the five in the corner. That's the key. If he gets to this position here, then... He can go two rails, side rail, side rail, and get himself over here, and then potentially draw behind the nine for the seven in the side. See, he has a slight funny angle here. Oh, he wanted to travel forward, get himself away from that rail, misses the ball inadvertently, and now... Casper the ghost gets a point. He's going to shoot that ball one more time, apparently, just to see if he can make it, get away from that rail. There. That was struck much better. We're going to continue to the next rack. Going to skip the racking. And we're gonna do another attempt. The score is 1-0 to Casper the Ghost. Let's see what's gonna happen this rack. And what's interesting with these player reviews, I can pause the video if there's really interesting situations. Also in matches, I can pause the video, I can go over all kinds of safeties here with the mouse, show you all kind of angles. So you can see all the solutions and options that would have potentially been available for you. Interesting little layout again. Here, for example, we can see if I freeze the frame, two ball can go here, three ball can go in the same pocket, but he has to be careful that he doesn't overrun his mark off this rail and get behind the five. So you have to try and get away from the three slightly with a tip of left spin 
end up around the spot. So then you can come off the side rail towards the middle of the table. So all you have to do here basically is roll this one in. Elect it to stun that one. See now, as you can see, you have a straighter angle and you need even more spin to do this. Therefore, if you would have rolled it in and come about here, the natural would have been even more natural. The angle would have been even more natural coming this way and opening up the angle even easier. So I would have opted for a roll shot there. Nothing major, but just slight situations that can have improvements. See, there's the exact example that I was talking about. He almost overrun his mark. There's two options now. He can go off the rail here and draw back almost to where he is. Play the four there, five in the side. Or you can go around the balls towards the middle of the table with a tip of high right. Personal preference, I kind of like the high right because rolling the shot there, you get a bit more feel towards the middle of the table. But the draw, you can let your stroke out. Nothing wrong with that. So let's see what Rick likes to do. Going for a direct draw. Didn't have that much angle. I think still with the follow, he could have gotten here here and then towards the middle would have been more connected dots four to the five now here you have to be slightly careful again you have a couple of options you can of course play the four in this corner go to this reel to this reel and coming into position for the five nothing wrong with that or if you're a little bit afraid of the speed you can go one two and around the five to play the five in this corner so two options on this shot that are high percentage. Let's see what Rick elects to do. Going for that two railer. That's high percentage. You see you're coming into the line of position once you hit that rail. If you would have landed here, here, or here, it's the same position. Again, I'm going to post a link here in the top. That's the key to position play coming into your angles if you can. Roll this one in, playing towards the eight. And now it's two stop shots. Again, if you want to let your stroke out, you could play it off the rail. Come here or soft draw. Personal preference. This is one of these things where I like to take the rack out, also to protect the rack, because the more you shoot over the rack, the more you're going to damage it. And once in a while, you can get a funny reaction with that rack and might even miss the ball. So the score is one to one. Rick is getting ready to break here in rack number three. Let's see what the table's going to give up. We're going to see a nice, interesting layout. He's electing to do the cut break. No, that one got away from him slightly. Still makes three balls on the break. Not the toughest layout, but you have to be smart with this seven to the eight. This is where it can really bite you. If you're careless with this seven on the eight, you could potentially mess up this rack. And why do I already say that? Well, because the one to the two, the two wants to go on this side. So if you put, place the cue ball about here, yeah, or there, and bump the rail here, again, you're coming into position for the two, high percentage play. Don't have to do much here. There, coming into position from here all the way up to here. Nothing wrong with that. He's got a great angle for the side. Going to stun it over to the middle of the table. That way you got all the room to just roll in the five. And the interesting part is going to come up, I think, in about two shots. Right there. I think I would have elected to play it in the side. Maybe his pockets are shimmed. I'm not sure. 
because that way you could have naturally come here. Nothing wrong with this, but this is where the fun starts because this seven is a trap. If Rick would elect to play the cue ball to this side rail, remember the pocket hanger videos. If you have a ball in the pocket, it's much easier to do something with it if you're either on this short rail or on this long rail. I'm gonna post a link here in the top for you guys. The tricky thing, if he lands the cue ball here, now he has to go around these two balls and the speed is going to be crucial. If you land here, you have a super tough eight in this corner. If you land here, you have a super tough eight from the middle of the table. Therefore, I would have elected to play personally the cue ball more towards the middle, get the cue ball to this short rail and then just roll in the seven with a tip of right spin coming towards the eight for the side pocket. And then I have two choices. I can roll it in, cue ball here for the nine there, or stun it over for the nine there. Let's see what's going to happen and if the trap is going to get Rick. See, the angle was slightly too big. He lands the cue ball now in this rail. Still, I feel with a tip of right spin and if you cut it in you can still come here then you will always have a nice shot for the eight in the side this way you have to go around the table look what happens there that's the perfect example pool players and we've all made that mistake trust me i've been there first thing i would do here is take out the rack because this time you have to slow roll the ball and you do not want to get hampered by that magic rack Apparently, Rick is also partially snookered by his own wall. <laughs> That's why he's taken off a piece of the cue. I think he's shooting this maybe with the break jump stick. Very nice recovery shot. But he, you see, he has to make one more. If he would have elected to play the cue ball here for the eight, the work could have potentially been much easier. So that's a big key for you aspiring pool players to keep in mind. Play that smart position. Even if a ball's laying in the pocket, it can bite you. Got to stay down on this ball. Ooh. Beautifully done there by Rick. Stayed down nicely on the shot, two to one. Let's fast forward to the next break. See what's gonna happen here. That was an interesting little layout because a classic trap showed up with that hanging ball. Great example. Let's see how this break is gonna react. Struck him pretty nicely. One traveling down table. Could have a go with this one without ball in hand. But that's not the drill. That five ball, he's pointing at the five. That's going to be a nice challenge. Let's see what the table's giving him. The three can't go here. The three has options in this corner and this corner. The four can go here. But how... Are you going to get from the five to the six? That's the tricky part because it's right next to the knuckle of the side. So you need to get fairly straight in either here or here. Here would be tricky because the seven's in the way. So I'm thinking the way I'm reading it, if he gets straight on this three for this corner, you could draw it back just slightly, roll the four in, get on this side rail here, and potentially draw back for the six in the side. If you can really lay it nicely on that side rail, you can even draw it away from the rail here for the six. Then it's six, seven, nine, connected. So how do you get to straight in on the three here? That's gonna be the kicker now. You could potentially 
plays the cue ball here with a stop shot, slide draw, hope to get straight in for the two on the side. He's doing another option, drawn back for this angle. Now, it's virtually impossible to get here, so we have to get to plan B now, which would be to get to this area here. That's where I would want to be. Let me pause this situation. This is interesting. With stun, if you can bump the rail here, come back into position for the three, then even if you're straight in, you can roll it slightly forward here for the four. If you have a slight angle, you can stun it over here or potentially draw it back to here. More risky, but we need to get to this side row anyway. So he's not in super trouble yet if you can bump the rail and get away from it. Let's see how he handles this. Not too much draw because then you're coming here. That's a nicely struck pool ball. Little bit hard to tell if he has an angle going away from the four. He's pointing his stick there, so I think with a slight roll, he can do exactly as I tried to predict. That would be ideal if he could just roll this four in and get here or here with the cue ball. Then this rack is still high percentage. Tricky thing here though, you have to execute two very gentle roll shots. Not my favorite. I like to hit the ball slightly more, especially under practice, uh, under pressure, excuse me. Some players under pressure, they're better at rolling the ball and some players are better letting their stroke out. And I'm personally one of those players I don't really like to shoot these roll shots under pressure. Not that there's any big pressure here, but still, it's under the camera. Rick's making a great effort. Is he totally straight in? That's the big question. If he's not, if he's on this side of straight in, he can go off the rail still and follow it. If he's totally straight in, then maybe he has to draw it back for a bank shot. Let's see. Yeah, that was the tricky part. I think he was just, just too straight in. Let me just rewind that one second. I think the angle wasn't quite there anymore. If you draw that ball back about two balls, you still have an option to bank the five and potentially go a couple of rails for the six in the corner. That's something your brain won't always allow you to do, but you have to take what the table's giving you on to the next rack. Two to two, still a lot to play for. I remember personally, when I came back from my first USA trips, I started with playing the 10 ball ghost, 10 ahead, you have to get 10 in front, so if you run three and then miss, you're on two. If you run another two, you're on four. You have to get 10 in front. And I was practicing that, then 11 ball, 12 ball, 13 ball. Now I'm doing it with 15, but that's awfully, awfully hard. I can't do 10 ahead. I do races to 10, but it's really great practice for your run out game. So spend some time playing the ghost. This will make you a much better player. Nice little layout here for Rick. The four and the six are totally connected. A stop shot on the four would mean straight in on the six for the side, then roll forward for the seven in the corner. And if you land the cue ball here on the rail, on the inside of the seven, you can draw away from that rail coming here for the eight and then either draw straight back or off the rail towards the nine. So actually, the two, everything's connected. It's just maintaining really good focus and getting yourself an angle now on the two where you can do this towards the four. Let's see what's going to happen. I think personally, I would like to roll this one in the side 
and come here kind of where he is now or even beyond with a roll shot i can judge that a bit better and i don't have to overstretch this shot so that's something maybe to look at there was absolutely nothing wrong with that shot though perfect speed but with a roll shot there you can judge it even slightly better just a tip of high right will bring you right here rick straight in on this four yeah that's great high percentage nine ball there coming into the shot people you see if he's here 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 or here it's the same angle and that's what you want to do if you want to run out remind you here it's better to just be slightly above oh and i was just saying that look what happened it was better to just be slightly above straight in because then you can stay on this side of the table now if you land on that side of straight in you have a lot of work to do because there's an eight ball there and you have to go around the table or you have to go up and down this is trouble I see two solutions. First one is if the seven goes in the side, you could still get somewhere here, cut it in. The other thing, three solutions. The other thing is with a middle ball and a tip of left, you could try to come here for the seven in the corner. Or if you're really straight in now, straightish, just draw away from it and take the bank on the seven in the side or bump into the eight even that's a bit hard to see this angle he could get past the eight not a bad shot good recovery gotta stay down on this one just make it in the corner and i think with a stun shot you can get here so you can still recover from this played it with a middle ball that's why the cue ball traveled slightly forward. I think with a stun, you would have been even closer on the eight. Nothing really wrong with this, though. Just draw this back. Don't have to do put too much draw on this. About here is fine, pool players. Don't overdraw it. He went to the rail. Also fine. And here's something that I personally find interesting. I'm always going to hit this ball with some outside spin, in this case, right English, some helping English, and with stun going two rails around the corner. That way I can let my stroke out. It's totally natural if the nine is just under the spot, that shot is going to come up about 5,000 to 100,000 times in your pool career, pool players. So learn to shoot those shots. If it's just under the spot here, two rails out of the corner if you're above that ball. Rolling this ball at a half ball hit, you're asking for bad contacts. You're asking for your stroke to go wiggly wobbly on you because you have to slow roll it. This way you can let it out and you can just go two rails somewhere to this side of the table let's see how rick elects to play this one that's the roll shot personally i don't like to shoot the ball that way because first of all also i'm coming towards the side pocket a bit it's an iffy stroke in my humble opinion and I urge you to practice going two rails out of that corner. I think it's just slightly higher percentage. Also, Rick, if you're hearing this, practice that one. I think you're going to like the feel of that shot a bit better. 3-2 to Rick. Let's see this next break here. That was a bit too fast. Here we go. See the hit on this one nice little cut break there one ball coming out of the corner could have been beautifully there even just slightly harder for a normal break hmm in 
interesting little layout. The four is on this side. The five is all the way on the opposite side of the table. So we have some work to do. So some work to do. Couple of options. Ideally, you would want to try and get under this four. That way you have options going side rail, side rail towards the five. How can we do that? That's the tricky part. If you get on above the two and on this side, you could stun it over, bounce to the rail, try to do that. Not easy to do. Another option would be, let me have a look here. If we would roll the one in, play the two on the side, draw back here, shoot the four in this corner. Is there something productive we can do with that one? Yes, there is. We could potentially with stun and a tip of left go one, two in between the six, nine. Not easy to do. And another option we can potentially master getting straight in on the two, rolling slightly forward to this position it's not easy with this eight and seven that's why i don't really like it that way we could have drawn the four in maybe and going this way this way here and then coming into position i'm always trying to touch this rail first here or here because that way we're coming into that line of position guys that's what we're looking for personally I think I would like to come here and try to do the first option, this one. Let's see. Nothing easy about this one. This is where you need to commit. That's the key because there's a bunch of options and pockets for the two. You need to commit to a high percentage route that you can notice and then try to execute. See, I think that might have been the case there. A bit of 50-50 slightly unsure what the high percentage route is maybe and therefore coming with a haphazard stroke not haphazard but a bit of an understroke and getting out of line straight away in the two we all do that from time to time and you see there not a bad shot actually to recover got into a small area but Usually with a lot of amateur players, it gets from bad to worse fast within one or two shots. Still a chance, potentially with some left spin, helping English, throwing that ball in. Could maybe come here, let the spin carry you down, bump this rail and come back up. Is he drawing it? There it is. Oh, hits the ball. Look at this. No. Nope almost got away with it the tricky thing there is you have to put so much spin and even speed on it to make the ball that's why the cue ball got away from him in a future video i'm gonna actually make a video of some of these shots where the reverse spin so counterintuitive where right spin is actually gonna help you to kill the action on the cue ball and stay in position for the five here when you're playing the ghost you can give a blast the luck factor counts so i would hit that ball pretty firm try to create something maybe you bank it in kick it in and then you can get on the board still scores three to three tricky little layout there interesting situation let's see this break again I like that previous break. That was really nicely done. There, you see that one ball's traveling beautifully two rails out of that corner. That's a great break for the US Open if you're watching this ins inspiring pool players. Aspiring, I should say. What do we have here? Another interesting situation. Rick's getting down awfully fast here. Key here is players stay on the inside of this two that way when you make it here you can cross over remember the crossover drill and cross over to the three in this corner pocket 
Has he spotted that right out of the gate? Just a bit of low left. There, I think Rick just started that rack a bit too fast. If he would have realized this layout here, carry him over and cross over to the three, and then the balls would have been more connected. Now, you're fighting an uphill battle, trying to get back in line. You could blast it off the rail, try to get back towards the middle of the table. You need a big power stroke for this. Nicely done. Almost got the maximum out of that. If you land here, in this position, you can go off the rail coming back in line. Because now the angle's steeper, you have to go side rail with potentially one tip of left spin or nothing. I want to get away from the six, that's the thing. One, two, and back towards the middle of the table. Not an easy shot. Sensitive shot, especially on a bouncy rail or bouncy rails. Then you really have to play these shots with a lot of finesse. One tip of high left make the ball cinch the ball and just get a bit further than where you are right now that was slightly under hit see that's the tricky part with that one i don't think you put enough left on it you would have been here or here and this is a tough one so these little details is why we're doing this review just to help rick just discover these little nuances to get him more towards the middle of the table and increase his level. If you watch this back, there's always a bunch of little details. Also there, very tough shot. But Rick, try to stay down as much as you can on those shots. That's the biggest flaw in all of us when we get under the gun and facing tough shots. We have the tendency to move in the shot. That's probably the biggest flaw in pool players' game. We all do that. And if you can realize and work on staying down as much as you can on every shot, especially when you're uncomfortable, your success rate is going to go up. Four to three to Casper the Ghost. Rick to break. Here we go. Can he pull one back and make it four four? Nice little break once again. What do we see here, pool players? Check it out. The fours over here, fives next to it. How do we get nicely from the three to the four? Basically, if we're straight in on the three here or here, we've done our job. So the next question is, how do we get to that position or this position on the three? Just get his cue out of the way. Now it's over here. <laughs> I think, personally... Let me have a good look at this. Again, two options. If you pocket the one here and you get to the inside of this two, then you have options to stay away from this rail. And you can actually draw it over here or you could draw it all the way back towards here. You have to execute a nice speed shot no matter what. If you're coming here or here. But the biggest thing is Stay away from this rail. What you can also do, it's pretty high percentage, pocket the one, get over here, approximately here, and then off the rail, coming back over here. That's also high percentage. So there's a couple of options. Let's see which one he picks. I think that second option wouldn't be too bad either. There, yeah. So just draw it in. Get back a couple of balls. Give yourself an angle. Nice shot. And this with low left. It's kind of a yo-yo shot from the yo-yo drill. 
where the balls are here and here, and you have to cross back over, back and forth the whole time. It's kind of one of these shots. You want to end up around the spot area with low lift. Nice stroke, stay down. Don't have to hit it too hard. Okay, Rick elected to do this route. Nothing wrong with that shot. But you have to be careful now of the eight. You have to play this cue ball in between the side and the eight ball. Don't want to make contact with this eight because you're going to be stuck here. You have to judge this well and try to come off the rail somewhere here. Think a tip lower. Ooh, got there. Interesting situation here because the angle is a bit too severe to draw over for the five. Top spin, I've made this mistake many times. If you follow this ball in and you just graze this five, the five comes here and cue ball does this and you have nothing. I've done that many times. With these shots, if the angle's slightly too much, I've learned to just cannon into the five if they're so close together with a bit of stun and left spin. I think if you just hit it here, the five goes there, cue ball stays about here. Even if you catch it a bit too thin, five goes here, cue ball's here. Still no big deal. But can he still draw? The way I see it on the screen, I think you could just cannon into that ball. See this top spin, I've, I've messed this up many times. There, I just, for me personally, I, th I find those shots so tricky to judge because where you pocket that four in the side of the pocket makes such a big difference how this ball is coming out of these angles, out of the rail. If you shoot it like thick into the corner, you're coming uh, deeper into the rail. And if you're, if you're cutting it to this side of the corner, you're coming all the way here. And that's kind of what happened. So here... Another interesting shot. I think personally, with maybe two tips of right spin, I'm going to try and do one, two, and let the cue ball travel a bit and come over here. I think I don't have to baby it. If you want to hit it softer, you can go one, two, and do this. Personal preference, if you're a really good roller, then you can do this. If you don't really fancy that one too much, you can just get slightly past the six. So a couple of options. Make sure you commit to the shot. Otherwise, you end up here. We've all done that, right, pool players? It looks like Rick is going for the opposite corner. Hard to judge that angle. Nicely done. Still alive. That's what you get when you're playing the ghost sometimes. You get out of these crazy positions. Your shot making is going to get better. And here, with a high ball, make the six in the side. Cuba will go here. And with some left spin, Try to get down here for a shot on the eight in the top corner. Tricky little shot because with that inside spin and a half ball hit, it could get away from you. There. Oh, made the ball, but there wasn't enough inside on it or the cue ball would have done more of this. Still an option to run out. Again, personal preference for you pool players. If you cinch this ball, just pocket it. Cue ball is going to go here and here. Nothing wrong with that. If you want to let the stroke out, the shot becomes a bit tougher. It's hard to do this and this. You could potentially try to draw under the nine. That's an option. But I think the roll shot here is not a bad option for Rick. Potentially one tip of left spin 
Just hit the opposite side rail. Make the ball. That's the key. No, that was the tough part. Look at that. Almost locked it in the corner. You see, there was a good example of where making the ball and taking the shot from here potentially could have been a better solution. So learn something there. Rick, hope you enjoyed this. Practice up, buddy. Seeing good things. Keep working on that ghost game and you will get better. There you go, pool players. Really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Once again, if you want to jump on this yourself, feel free to contact me on social media, private messages, matches, and playing the ghost, pattern analysis, the whole works. Jump on that yourself. Don't forget to check out all the other great content on the channel. There's tips and lessons here uploaded weekly. Remember, if you're interested in the mental side of the game, head over to terminatorcollege.com. Check out all those courses that are just waiting there for you. Take care.